Hey folks, Jackdaw here. With the release of Dragon's Dogma 2 close by, let's delicately dive back into the original game's story and its various endings, pondering how they might actually shape the sequel. With DD2 unfolding in a parallel universe, brace yourself for the emergence of multiverse versions of familiar characters and interconnected storylines that could seamlessly transition and hit differently from the original Dragon's Dogma. In the first game, players assumed the role of the Arisen, a chosen hero tasked with saving the world in the aftermath of a catastrophic dragon attack that marked the end of days. Unbeknownst to us, this epic saga then unfolded within a cyclical world that resets every millennium, overseen by a singular god seeking a worthy successor, quite the plot twist. So whether you're a seasoned veteran or a newcomer to the series, this recap offers a clear overview of the first game's plot, never missing a beat, a perfect primer for the upcoming DD2 launch. Like lightning on my feet, let's shake off the dust of Dragon's Dogma's 12-year-old story. In the prologue of the original, we initially join an arisen knight named Savan and his group on a quest to defeat the dragon, a harbinger of the apocalypse. We then fast forward to an unknown time in the duchy of Grancis, where our protagonist, in my case, Taylor Swift, becomes the next arisen, marked for the quest to slay the dragon. The arisen's quest unfolds as they defend an encampment from a hydra attack, witnessed by soldier Mercedes Martin. The mission then shifts to escorting a Hydra head to the capital, Grand Sorin, aiming for an audience with the immortal Duke Edmund Dragonsbane. Undertaking quests for the Worm Hunter Guild becomes pivotal in gaining an audience with the Duke. And so throughout these quests, the Arisen finds support from a former Arisen known as the Dragonsforged. They explore the Everfall, an underground tower recognised by the local pawn guild, and they confront Salvation, a nihilistic cult led by Elysian, fervently seeking the dragon's victory. Discovering Mercedes's role as a token ally, the Arisen realises that other nations fear Grancy's potential dominance if the Duke manages to, quote, defeat a second dragon. More on that one in a bit. But as the challenges intensify, the Arisen then faces Elysian, who turns his followers into undead in an attempt to kill our Arisen. Despite Elysian's threat, the dragon arrives and actually kills Elysian, presenting a challenge to the Arisen to find and stop the impending apocalypse. And so confronting the dragon, our Arisen is then given a choice. Fight and kill the dragon, or sacrifice their beloved, a character they've grown close to during the game, in exchange for replacing the Duke as the ruler of Grancis, which is actually a parallel to the Duke's previous own deal with the dragon, explaining why he has been immortal for so long. And this choice actually marks one of the game's four endings, revealing a cyclical pattern. If the Arisen accepted, the dragon honours the deal and becomes dormant. The Arisen then takes credit for the victory, becoming the new Duke of Grand Sorin. This ending unveils the origins of Duke Edmund's rule, hinting at a cycle then destined to repeat. The game then concludes with our Arisen adorned in ducal robes, sitting on on the throne, lonely and despondent, until a new Arisen replaces them, ever continuing this cycle. Now, if our hero defeats the dragon, which is kind of the default choice anyway, the Arisen and all associated with the dragon lose their immortality, and the Everfall becomes a bottomless pit, swallowing parts of Grand Sorin. And as the Arisen returns to Grand Sorin, they are attacked by the now aged Duke, who accuses the Arisen of cursing cursing him. And so fleeing Grand Sorin with their pawn, the Arisen enters a higher plane through a portal within the Everfall, facing a godlike being known as the Seneschal, who was formerly the Knight Savan who we witnessed in the prologue. The Seneschal discloses their role as a former Arisen tasked 
with sustaining the world through their life essence. And as their essence fades over time, the Seneschal needs a replacement, explaining the recurring cycle of sending a dragon out, getting an Arisen, the Arisen then replacing the previous Seneschal as the next god to sustain the world through their own life essence. And this is the point where the story unfolds with three endings. First up, if the Arisen completely rejects becoming the new Seneschal and chooses a normal life, they are teleported to their hometown, Karsidus, without the dragon attack ever happening. The player is no longer Arisen, their pawn vanishes, nowhere to be seen, and disappointed, the Seneschal allows the player to live peacefully. But the cycle is likely to continue as a new replacement is needed. Now, if the Arisen chooses to fight the Seneschal, but actually loses the battle, this transforms the Arisen into the next dragon, tasked with now finding a new Arisen, literally initiating the next cycle. And in the final definitive ending, the one that most people will have probably gone for, at least Taylor Swift did, once defeating the Seneschal in a fight, the Arisen is given the Godsbane, a weapon that has enough power to kill the Seneschal. And so, with the Seneschal's demise, their power transfers to the Arisen, enabling them to ascend as the new Seneschal. Our Arisen decides to break the cycle using the Godsbane to end their own life. And next thing, we see them falling back towards Grancis with their pawn. And the game mysteriously concludes with their pawn awakening within the Arisen's body as they then meet their beloved, leaving the fate of the world ambiguous. And so after the conclusion of Dragon's Dogma, as I stated before, the sequel is now in a parallel universe. And this possibly could be post the great hereafter. It's here where the Arisen cycle has been shattered and the world now faces a gradual demise, which I think is a compelling starting point for a new adventure. With the emergence of a new Arisen in DD2, we do now have a fresh perspective in a world free from the cycle of its predecessor. But this is Dragon's Dogma, and so is this world truly free from its previous cycles? We're gonna have to find out. What we do know is DD2's narrative unfolds against the backdrop of two nations, Vermund, a human kingdom, and and Batal, home to the Beastron race. And we do have an intriguing plot twist which takes centre stage as the Queen Regent Deesa of the human kingdom Vermund has manipulated a power struggle for the throne by employing a false arisen. This imposter, somehow backed by pawns in their service, has taken over, which implies a mystery with ties to alternate universes and other arisen cycles if they are indeed an arisen. Because their ability to command pawns certainly suggests legitimacy to the title, unless they have some sort of shrewd manipulation of pawns. And so Dragon Sogma 2 does promise an enthralling narrative, placing the Arisen at the core of a multiverse-spanning saga, it would seem. Whether directly influenced by the events of the original game, or one of the endings, or just a definitive hereafter ending, or just not completely in its own self-contained parallel universe, you can definitely still expect a maze of plot points with endless time loops to keep you engaged constantly. And we still have many interconnected plot lines. For example, will our next Arisen face a similar entity to the Seneschal? Or how about shadow versions of the first game's characters? Ulrika is giving me absolute Quenna vibes, as she is one of the first characters to save our Arisen after the dragon attack, which is exactly what Quenna does. And Wilhelmina reminds me of Madeline with her business savvy occupation. Either way, what appears to be a simple dragon hunt is definitely not. We're in for a timey-wimey trip of a time loop time with Dragon's Dogma 2. So let me know down below all of your story speculations and expectations for DD2 and how much you think the original game will influence in terms of this game's story. Let me know also what you thought of the first game once the finale actually opened up with all of its mayhem. But until next one, of course, for all your things on Dragon's Dogma 2 as we follow it to its launch. Launch, you're already in the right place. I've been Jackdaw, and I should go. Whoa, 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 whoa.